I'll make this short. Dear Ryan, a while ago, a serendipitous encounter with your article has made me realize, yet again, how weak a man I am, getting his attention derailed toward your beautifully crafted expose of our values arguably entombed within the confines of the Judeo-Christian tradition's gentle embrace. So, let's cube the meat. This here are the points which define the whole article. In brief, the Western civilization is under threat of authoritarian imperialists, China, Russia and Islamists, plus the bulk cultists. We can't fight them, unless we answer what unites us. The strawman answers don't help much. Ergo, the Judeo-Christian tradition and Christianity come to the rescue. As you seem to struggle with definitions, let me provide you with a simple line of reasoning. So, there is a very down-to-earth question hidden underneath the pile of sophistry. What happens if we don't fight? As a Ukrainian, let me help you. We fight for our existence, lest we be subjected to genocide and forced assimilation. For our culture, lest our identity be erased, an identity which is not defined by the Judeo-Christian tradition. It is much richer and much more diverse. I'd rather people did not go down the path of preferring religious identification or the national one, unless they wish to fulfill the Islamist dream of a caliphate. The Judeo-Christian way, of course. As a Belgian. I'm not a Belgian, I'm a Muslim. You're not Belgian? No, I'm a Muslim. So you don't feel that Belgium has given you anything? No. Moreover, many bearers of that very tradition are, at the very least, using it as part of their cousin's belly, and are pretty convinced they are perpetrating an imagined divine command. Sounds familiar? Um, in the absence of a divine command, as I say, it could well have been immoral. But given the presence of divine command, it becomes the moral obligation of those persons to whom it was issued. You praise the freedom of conscience and speech, the free market, the political evolution of our system of government, and attribute it to Christianity. You say that unlike Islam, Christianity outgrew its dogmatic stage. Wrong, we outgrew Christianity. Getting back to the list of what we are fighting for. For our families, our friends, the future of us and our children. For our right to exercise sovereignty within our internationally recognized borders. Countless devout Christians are fighting in the ranks of our army, but they are fighting for their fatherland against its centuries-old oppressor, not specifically for Judeo-Christian values. Perhaps you should direct your epistemological attention to the state of your and your allies' military first and foremost. You might come to need it soon. All in all, you fled from a self-imposed void and now seek to dignify it by winning political credit. Your post-hoc rationalizations are not very impressive. Expecting quite a few unamused Christians who actually care about their faith. Dear Ian, what you are doing is not upholding our culture, defending our legacy, propping up our civilization. You have instead either alienated or rebranded a large chunk of our heritage. You could not bear to look at the full picture, similar to how Semele could not bear Halawa's divinity and covered your face with a new niqab. Dear Nihilist. Sincerely yours, me. Postscript. Atheism has nothing to do with spirituality whatsoever. It characterizes one's stance on the existence of gods. Post postscript, not a love letter. Well, I, I don't think it is an attempted genocide because 
if, if they would flee uh, and leave the land, the judgment of God would be accomplished and satisfied. As I say, the judgment was to destroy these uh, petty kingdoms as nation states by divesting them of the land, and the land was being given over to Israel. It wasn't important that all of these people be exterminated.